Welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break, your home for current community talk with Patricia Duart, Darlene Hayes, and Connie Wright. Hello and welcome to our coffee break. Look where we are in, everyone knows, Hopkinton High School's Athletic Center. And we're here having coffee with Josh Hanna, from, who is, everyone knows, is the assistant principal here at the high school. What an exciting day and night and weekend that we're kicking off. Miss Mom of a graduate over there. Last one. Congrats. Last Two one. and through. Congratulations. Thanks. Yeah. You did a great job last night with the award ceremony. Well, it's been a busy week or so here. <laughs> sure. Yeah, the last two weeks have been uh, full of events for the senior class, uh, starting with last week. Uh, they did a sleepover in the staff parking lot as part of their senior prank, which was pretty <gasps> Oh, funny. that's hilarious. Yeah, they, had, they had tents and uh, things, and not everyone slept over, but many yeah. of the students did. And, that's so fun. Um, and then, they, of course, the last Wednesday was an event that the parents held at Gillette Stadium where uh, both Parent families and uh, kids went and celebrated and danced and nice slideshow. And then that kind of parlayed into this week where... We had uh, a number of events, including a picnic and, on yeah. Tuesday, and then a, a really nice kind of boat cruise around the city of Boston yeah. and the harbor on Weather Wednesday Weather cooperated. Night. They're yeah, beautiful. beautiful. Perfect. 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 And, uh, and last night was recognition night, where so many of our students were rewarded with uh, their hard work with uh, different honors, including scholarships totaling um, uh, well over $150,000, wow. and cool. then additional full scholarships awarded to two students uh, for their work in military academies and so on. So yeah, it was a pretty special week, and it, tonight it culminates here on the <laughs> stage where um, the students of the class of 2018 will walk across and receive their diploma, and kind of that kind of you know marks the end of their time here as, as Hopkins Public School. Members. So back up. Sure. Yeah. You walked across the but no. Not the stage. the stage. You walked across the stage. You walked across a Hopkins <laughs> stage. <laughs> stage. So tell us your story. Sure. Where did you grow up? And sure. That's, that's, it's right. Well, we were outside in 1995, in June 6th, 1995, was when our class graduated 66 students. And, uh, so you grew up in Hopkinton, and we're talking about, you're a hiller. Yeah. <laughs> he was in the class of 1995. Ah, okay, yeah. so not in this building, obviously. Yeah. No, no, this building no, yeah. um, hadn't even been approved by the community yet to be built. Right, because we moved here in 97, and that was the big discussion of the new high school. So you were in the old high school, the middle school. Yes, graduating. the middle school, it was mm -hmm. 7 through 12. Yeah, so we grew up in town, lived on Wood Street. Mm -hmm. and Your parents still did. Center school all the way through, wow. and uh, yeah, Center and Elmwood, and... Uh, then it was 7 through 12 was at the high school, yeah, so junior yeah. high. Um, so Hopkins wasn't even built right. then. No, no Hopkins. Hopkins was built, and then, and, and, yeah. you know, all this growth in these 20 years. Yeah, it's been a very uh, interesting 25 years, you mm -hmm. know, in terms of the growth of the community. In fact, in the early 90s, there was um, quite an exodus of students out of Hopkinton High School, mm -hmm. going to Marion, going to Holliston, Holliston. going to uh, Mount St. Charles, going to St. John's, basically right. anywhere yeah. but Hopkinton. Mm -hmm. right, and right. the community kind of rallied, uh, put together an override to, to subsidize and to support the schools that needed a tremendous amount of work uh, and growth. And that override was quickly followed in less than eight years later with another substantial override that, that put this building together. Okay. And wow. uh, since then, I think it's been a combination of location with 495, the mm -hmm. growth of uh, some of the kind of infrastructure within the community. Right. Certainly EMC helped, I think the town kind of continue to grow and recognize the importance of education and the mm -hmm. taxpayers stepped up and, and contribute at a level that allows for the schools to continue to succeed. But well, it's def definitely been a much different place than um, in the 1980s in Hopkinton right. yeah, with yeah, one no, street I mean, light. Are we, tomorrow <laughs> we open our third new, I'm gonna, I still look at this as a new school, but I mean we open our third new school in like 20 years here, right. which is a lot. Yeah. Where uh, the, the town has really taken investing into education extremely seriously. Mm -hmm. um, not only did you go to school here, you were very active here. You were the Hiller man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what does that mean, Josh? There were some funny, uh, funny times in those days, you know, and uh, we had some particularly successful teams in the winter. Our girls' basketball team uh, had tremendous success, got to play in the Boston Garden. Oh, and cool. Wow. There's a few, um, in the banner over there, there's a few names, Sonny Pearson and Kerry Chatton, wow. who were both 1,000-point scorers. And it was at a time where the town really needed something to you know, get itself excited and why was this a special place to be. 
And, uh, you know, in an effort to kind of help participate with that, we created a mascot that I would, you know, wear and jump around in the gymnasium during the winter uh, we have, season. And we have a picture of it that's going to get inserted. Yeah. So okay. yeah. So, yeah, those were, you know, Killer certainly when right. you do things at 16 years old, you that's don't fun. know that they're going to come yeah. back and talk about them publicly later. Yeah. But when you're running a school. Oh, but uh, it's uh, appropriate. That's appropriate. But you were also an athlete so cool. yourself. Yep, got to play football and baseball here. Had great okay. coaches and, and teachers, and um, you know it was a it was a special time in my life, and it stuck with me. So as my career kind of continued, the idea of coming back here to Hopkinton it was always something that I would I would thought, oh, that would be great if it happened to work out. Yeah. And uh, five years ago, I was lucky enough to um, you know get this position as an assistant principal, and it's been um, it's been a pleasure to come back and to give back to a community. That you gave so much to me. You also taught some here ask, too, didn't yeah. you? Because I thought you, you covered teach first, right? What, you taught in Natick. I taught in Natick. But then, I think one of the years when my son was here, you actually covered for a teacher that was on leave. I can't remember if it was history or I may social have. Yeah, studies. Yeah, yeah. There like was that, a that, point there. That you were at the parent teachers night saying, you know, I know I am on the assistant principal, but. I'm actually using this other hat of mine too and told the whole story about how you came from Natick. Yeah, um, I taught for many years in Natick okay. and so I have that degree and, yeah. and background in licensure and mm -hmm. so we were in a jam there a few years ago where we needed to sub out really quickly and I was able to jump back in and those were great years. I missed the classroom tremendously. That's a really special part of a school for sure. But that's it, a wonderful foundation obviously to be a school administrator, right? Yeah, and I think understand. it's helpful yeah. to have been in those shoes and know sure. the kind of, the you know, ebbs and flows, no that. doubt. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is a special place and uh, it's grown a lot in the last 30 years uh, in terms of population to go from a class of in that 50 to 60 student range to now over 300 in some of our classes. But the same fundamental belief the of school still seems. Uh, is there. You know, everyone in the community cares about children, cares about the school yes. getting better. And so when that occurs, you have a successful, um, you know, uh, program, and that's what we have here. That's why our school does so well. That's why our students achieve at such a high level is because everyone's pulling in the same direction. You definitely feel it. That's our brand here in Hopkinton, schools and kids, and mm -hmm. that's why most of us, you know, grew, raise our kids here and people move here. Yeah. It's, it's wonderful. Tell me again, how long have you been the assistant principal? So this here? is, I've uh, just finished up my fifth year. Fifth year, wow, yeah, it's a long so. time. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's gone by quickly. It's a great job. I work with Justin Palmanville, who's my colleague, the other assistant principal and mm -hmm. of course Evan uh, Bishop who's the principal of the building and we have a great team the three of us along with D King our athletic director mm -hmm. and uh, a great staff wonderfully hard-working teachers and um, uh, you know support staff around the, the, the entire place it's a hundred plus adults that every day come to work ready to yeah. uh, do their best support kids That's give them awesome. a chance to grow and then moms and dads in the community you know, put their children on the bus, well-fed, well-loved, yeah. told education's important, and uh, that's how it works, you know? Yeah. Now, how many students are currently here at the high school? So we have like a little, I think it's over 1,100 and like 70. Wow. It's in that range. We've had quite a few registered students this year. I think over 100 new students registered wow. uh, after Labor Day, mm. which is mm -hmm. not, not something that we've typically had, but the, certainly the enrollment's growing. Uh, we have a lot more housing coming up in the town of Hopkinton, which wow. allows for you know people to kind of move in and be part of the the success. Really, is yeah. what it's all about. So it's yeah, exciting. And what's and the you, graduating class size? So I think it's uh, I think it's three oh five, but I'm not hundred percent sure on that. It, you know. Yeah. Um, we have some. We have like 20 international students. Over 300. Yeah, I believe so. <laughs> that are, uh, yeah, exactly. Right. You know, we'll all be here. You can see the bleachers on either side. They'll be chock full tonight with yeah. students and throwing their caps in the yeah. air afterwards. Yeah, and, uh, yeah it's a great night. I think it's a they're decorating moment. some of their caps today from what I'm hearing and stuff yeah. like that. But the, um, you know, back to when you were here, you, you um, when you were an athlete, you actually got recognized for that not long ago. Um, by the town, oh, and yeah. you got the Top of the Hill Award. Oh, um, tell us about that. So that was somewhat embarrassing, but I, <laughs> I appreciate <laughs> you uh, bringing here. it up. Uh, <laughs> it was a program that um, I helped start with the HPTA and the HEF to help honor alums mm -hmm. who have gone on to do things in society at a really high level. Mm -hmm. Could be, you know, in the private sector, could be volunteerism, could mm -hmm. be, you know, d didn't really matter. Mm -hmm. uh, what it was, it was just that you took a passion and you and you went with it. And so, uh, to me, a school is best judged by those it graduates, and what do they go on and do with the education that you provided with them. Yeah. And so, to bring back folks um, that have gone on to do really impressive things, like and, Kelly and, Grill. Yeah, and exactly. Like that, that it, it's in. really a neat opportunity to show the current students like what you can be. You know, I mean the. 
as an example, uh, of course, the, the Brown family, Walter Brown, founded the yeah. Boston Celtics, right? Yeah. So that's a pretty yeah. cool thing to yeah. say. Our school sure created that. a foundation yeah. that, that allowed for someone to find something as, mm -hmm. as you know, and that's one example. And then there's, there's many others. Yeah. So that's, But that's, you sat on the committee, right, this yes. year? And well, you didn't he, have any well, idea. He, not only did he sit on it, he founded the committee. Right, right. he right, founded right, the right. committee, he but you also it. sat on it this year, and you had you no, no idea. idea yeah, yeah no, it was, uh, it was a like, surprise. And I, I to be frank, so I would have said, no, that's not appropriate. I, <laughs> I'm not interested in that. I, I want to a bring to man. the students, the, <laughs> yeah. the, you know, the graduates that have really done amazing things, deserve to be called out and recognized. Well, don't underestimate yourself. This is amazing. I was like, this is amazing. Don't underestimate yourself. So now... Um, let's get a little personal. Uh, do you live here in town or you live outside of town? Married, children? Sure. So, uh, yeah, I'm mar happily married. Uh, this will be our 15th wedding anniversary oh, this August. Congrats. With a Hopkinson girl. Oh, uh, oh yeah. even We went to the dress up dance together in that grade. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, yes, pretty funny. So cute. Um, and we were friendly throughout high school and we got reconnected at our five year reunion. <gasps> Believe it or not, Aww, and um, no. so we're yeah we live in uh, Grafton. Okay. Actually, our children go to Westboro schools. My okay. wife teaches in Westboro. Ah. Yeah. Oh, so it's uh it's we're that's lucky great. in that regard. And ten and seven, and we chase them around with their dance and <laughs> hockey and lacrosse and things. And yeah, Aww. very very blessed. It's uh you know I'm lucky, Aww. and I have so many friends that. Uh, in fact, I shared a picture. Uh, mm -hmm. with you earlier in the week and uh, there was four of us I think the, five the of us prom guys yeah and they all still live in town you know That's so uh, this place provided such a great foundation for us all mm -hmm. that we've been attracted to come back so many of my friends from high school are raising their yeah, families I think about like Brendan Tedstone community. and like Anna Michelle Gassett and Bill Gassett and things right. like that that have, have, have stayed right they, Connor they feel, Deegan our town clerk is yeah. yeah yeah when you I mean the reality is when you drive around the country and, and we've all probably traveled to many different places we've seen different environments um this is a pretty special place to, to kind of like settle down and say i want to call this home uh, right. and so i feel like that's a big reason why so many people come back you know people don't want to leave necessarily no. uh, you leave for a bit and you kind of explore and you right. develop and grow and then you say you know deep down when it comes to where do i want to buy a house right. this is a place that's pretty cool so uh yeah we're, i've been lucky to have so many friends around and we stay very close those are my closest friends are my friends from high school no doubt that's wonderful that's I wonderful. smile as I head to my high school reunion out of town, but you know some of the things. Yes, we were she's saying. headed out tonight. Yes, <laughs> oh, I'm nice. resonating. Oh yeah. my, I don't know. It's been a million years. I'm hoping that I recognize people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't recognize Get me. Some name tags going right, <laughs> right. <laughs> with pictures of all the. We did the that at one of our re yeah. reunions. We had pictures on it, and um, I know I've shared with these guys before is that um, I've been involved in the reunions, and I only grew up in the next town over. Is um, we've actually had couples get married. What almost after every single reunion, another yeah. couple's gotten together. Oh, so out of 108 that graduated in my class from Ashland, we have six couples married, which is a lot. Yeah, it's 12 kids. It's right. more than 10 percent of our class That's is right. married to each other. Yeah. <laughs> we have a similar number, and a lot of and them you had a small school. school. Yep, and a lot of them were high school sweethearts. Mm -hmm. God, you know, amazing. I went to so. a, big, a big city school. I mean, Cincinnati's not a big city, but it was, you know, oh, it wasn't in a small city. town. Yeah. So, you know, I think I'll be meeting people for the first time. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. So, That's oh, great. Well, That's so great. So, you know, this, you know, I always think, and not to be, the um, responsibilities of being responsible yes. for kids is overwhelming now, it seems to me. As it's a really parent changed. of someone whose kids are grown and mm -hmm. had this amazing experience here in Hopkinton, like, like almost every kid does. You know, and you want to continue that, uh, obviously, and you, you are continuing that. But the, the overwhelming challenges of all of the things, security and all the various needs that kids have and their families, how did in the world you get your mind around that? Well, you know, it really starts with just being uh, a caring person and trying yeah. to build relationships, try to get to know yeah. people, right? So if, if people feel welcomed and a part of something, then they're safe and they tend to act safely. Mm -hmm. uh, so mm -hmm. that to me is like the most important piece. I mean, yeah, you're right. There's no doubt nationally we're in a really tough spot right now with school safety and the, you know, what are we, what, what are we talking about? We're we talking about, you know, actual like security of a building. Mm -hmm. Are we talking about gun control? Are we talking about like, you know, mental wellness oh, yeah. and how, and yeah, how are we how are we bringing those three things <laughs> yeah, together right. and addressing them in a meaningful way and and it's it's not easy it's a complicated stuff and but you know it, to me it starts at home 
if you have families that are checking in with their children and like I said, feeding Absolutely. them, loving them, got, telling yeah, them that, totally. you know, be behave, this is important. And then they go to a place where that's being reiterated by other adults and yep. other community members and coaches. And, and then outside, maybe if it's a faith thing, you're, you're yeah. involved in whatever area that is. And you're yeah. hearing from yet another set of adults that are right. reiterating the same important yep. things about being kind and, and taking care of yourself. Then, you know, we have our best chance. Yeah. I, there's no, like... Uh, camera system that we're going to be able to install that's right. going to like take away any yeah. of the dangers that we have in our society. It's about being, you know, a kind, caring person. Right. Really. And, I, and those I think, reinforcements. Absolutely. You know, you're hitting on a lot of it. You know, that whole emotional kind of well-being in that safe place. And, you know, as someone who's going to have someone walk across the stage tonight, that happened here at the high school more than any other school. Um, I know um, Andy Longoria has been a mentor and advocate for my daughter huge but I also know like you've actually friended her a bunch and we've met a couple times and um, even on like a personal level you'd be like all right you know you can have my parking spaces one day you know <laughs> you're, driving, you're driving my mom's old car kind of <laughs> but it was like you know you, but you took per people are to take personal interest they know where yes. people live they know things about them they know if something's going on in their family life and um, you know they call Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, well, it's, like I said, it's a special, I mean, I've been to many different schools and universities as a student yep. or as a, a faculty member and different high schools and so on. And, and this really stands alone as a special place. Really? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And it's one of the reasons why I was so excited to have the opportunity to come back. You, you're just, you're surrounded by caring, hardworking, intelligent, yeah. uh, you know, adults and, and, and families. And so it, it makes it like the work is getting done. We're, we're making progress versus in some places, Frankly, you're in a triage situation, right. and you know it's really hard to see like progress made. So, is it both mm -hmm. what I consider tone at the top from the administration, and from the bottom, the town and the the, the families? I mean, would you? Well, let's do sideways. How does this, I think it's a yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, no. Well, yeah. I, meant, I meant, but I'm thinking, you know, I mean, no, it's it's, yeah. it's absolutely a communal effort. I mean, there's no doubt it takes so many people moving in the same direction to make progress. So, yeah, it, it's. It, like I said, it's everyone has the same ideas about keeping things safe, having the I belief that children can grow, yeah. and then what are we doing with our resources to make sure that people have, um, you know, the the time and money to to actually do it, and then have the talented staff. I mean, our teachers are so well, gifted to put them in a place where it's like, all right, do your work, mm -hmm. and then they're ready to, and they're excited to. So, and speak about um, some of the programs. I mean, we have some exceptional, you know, at the high end academic. But we also have, you know, the spectrum. So for all students, you know, chat about that a little bit. And, and well, yeah, I mean, the you know, opportunity and challenges there. Absolutely, we're talking. I mean, it's a diverse group, right? You got uh, 1,200 or so, uh, 15 to 18 year olds. I mean, mm -hmm. they're all going to be different places in life. And we think to yourself where you were at that age, and, and compared <laughs> to some of your classmates, and then you know, what do you look like 15, 20 years later? And we, we all get there, but maybe not at the same right. uh, speed, so to speak. And so I think it's important to, as a school, have a lot of adjustments that are able to be made depending upon who we're interacting with. So, you know, whether it be interests or ability or situational, we have a great program that uh, supports students who, you know, maybe they had a concussion. Mm -hmm. And so they need a couple Some weeks kind of to kind of just mm -hmm. sit in low lighting have their work kind of broken down in a manner that allows for their brain to heal, yeah. but mm. also stay current with the program. And so since we've instituted that mm -hmm. program, uh, we've had such limited number of uh, credit loss with uh, Good. you know students who have had head trauma. And of course, we're learning a lot about head trauma, so we're recognizing yeah. it isn't something you should just say, hey, get back in the classroom, you'll be fine. You I know? had a student right. that, <laughs> my son, <laughs> my, mm -hmm. I had a child with, yeah. And there's been a lot of, whether they're clubs or special interests, on inclusion and diversity and mm -hmm. acceptance and you've seen it more over the last couple of years really bonding and people like you know kids choosing to like hang out with kids that they normally wouldn't have because mm -hmm. you know you know seeing who you know, might take the special needs kid to the prom or who might be doing it's been very cool to watch the last few years and yeah saw that even even when my kids were in school so i have a graduate in 2004 and 2009 so you know that that era and i had the pleasure of subbing here for a couple of oh, years great. oh yeah in the art department primarily where all kids flowed through whether it was fine arts or the computer lab or whatever and and certainly got a sense of that same thing um, as, a, as an 
art sub, you wouldn't know who was in what level of class in terms of their academic whatever performance. All just wonderfully, you know, talented, helping each other, all grades together. It was wonderful. Yeah, well, like yeah. you say, I mean, it's, a, it's a very open place, um, caring place, very uh, supportive, and the students want to see one another achieve and succeed. And so, and that's the tone that the kids carry with them. It does, it makes for a very welcoming place. But uh, again, that's modeled by the moms and dads. I mean, I remembered that, you know, and I think it might be from the small town field, but, you know, a lot of kids from Holliston and Ashland and Hopkinton, and we did a lot together, the three towns, was we stayed local. We either, they went to schools in the greater Boston area, Rhode Island, New Hampshire. Oh, colleges? And yeah. colleges, yeah. where I th have seen more in the last probably decade, where kids are really expanding. We have two kids graduating this year. One is going to London, one is going to Wales. I mean, right. um, kids going as far as California to Texas. That has been a different trend than we used to have. Well, to be honest, I think the internet's kind of broken out some of the oh, boundaries yeah. that previously say, existed. Yep, like, true. you now can go just Google out where it is this place is, take yeah, a look at right. it. Say, oh, wow, that's achievable. Right. And our world's getting smaller, right? Our population mm -hmm. across the globe is growing. Uh, in some instances exponentially, and so I think students are recognizing if I'm going to succeed, I need to be comfortable right. outside. A global and, citizen. Yeah, yeah, so to kind of just get that sense, and it's more accessible now with the uh, information that's available. So that's one unique part about these millennials that I think the rest of our kind of country is going to continue to watch grow and really, um, you know, go over the top with their inclusiveness and kind of understanding of the world far greater than generations before just because of informational accessibility. I mean, Absolutely. you know that when when you do the recognition awards and the, the recognition night and they're starting to stay and we go by the office and we see the pennants where all the kids are going, you know you're going to see a lot of the state schools, you're going to see Northeastern and BC and BU. It was so overwhelming to see how many weren't going to yeah. those and that, you know, they're really uh, actually Providence College yeah. was like, mm -hmm. Lawrence College got a huge hit in UNH from previous years. <laughs> well, I think it's a testament, though, that the students are being accepted into these institutions. Mm -hmm. It speaks really well for how you are preparing the students and that they are cutting muster at, at, at this whole spectrum Absolutely. of schools. And, you know, out there in places, it's like, <laughs> I mean, oh, my goodness, parent. it's yeah. amazing. Right. I mean, we from West Point to two that. Ivy League schools yeah. last yeah. night. Exactly. But as a parent, you know, you, you prepare your kids. I mean, and the kids go to college. They, they, the match was, was perfect. Sure. And the, the, the uh, support and guidance they got in terms of choosing those schools and getting out in four years and having a good job after. I mean, yeah. just like kind of textbook and it doesn't always work out that way but I, we really accredit you know well the it's foundation a whole system it starts in that. kindergarten and you teaching students how to read and, and then you know it starts with the writing and arithmetic and so on and then it just grows and grows and it, it works right now no doubt and we've been on a real hot streak in the last 20 years for because of a lot of hard work from a varied group but I think you mentioned it earlier it's a combination effort yeah. bringing a lot of resources together and that kind of caring about education attitude uh, and Hopkins is a great place to be no Absolutely. doubt so I know a lot of teachers pick up different like you know side gigs during the summer do you do you work during the summer do you get to just take it easy for the summer <laughs> no definitely not take it easy we still come in uh, I used to do the yeah I did the side gigs when I was coaching and teaching and yeah. ran summer school and camps and hustled and one of the reasons this job was attractive was to try to get out from having to change my clothes frankly so many times a day you know it was like my car hadn't been cleaned in like five years I had tons of equipment and things and so um but no, we come in, we set the schedule for the following year. We, if we have any people retiring or things of that nature, we fill spots. And Excellent. we kind of critically look at our different cohorts of students coming up and on you know assessments, MCAS assessments, what trends are we seeing and what s small adjustments can we make within our schedule to help address the needs of our learners and give them a chance to yeah. get the support to grow in math Absolutely. and English and so on. So, so there's a, it's, it's quieter work, obviously. Yeah. 1,100 less kids and 100 mm -hmm. less staff, but it's... Uh, it's deliberate work that gives us a chance to, to grow throughout the year. Yeah. And tonight's graduation. That's yeah. a, that's a big, the yeah. big message tonight. And we're going to air tonight, I believe. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So. We, we, yep. we, uh, after, we, after, we graduation. after graduation. Graduation is actually aired live. So people probably have just watched graduation and then pop on and see Josh. Yeah. So yeah. At, so at, graduation right. so yeah, 6 o'clock. Graduation yeah. 6. It's live mm -hmm. in HCAM. And then, um, you know, what, something neat that um, has been kind of cool that you guys have done is the um, parents have been able to 
grandparents in the auditorium yeah. Yeah. and stuff like that. So I mean, it's, and it's always replayed. So okay. it's going to be a great night. So Absolutely. this and weekend, I, things coming up. Anything quick? We're going to be. Um, that being I short. think the Lions Club like traveling yard sale thing is That's going right. on. That's right. And. Um, I think outside of that, I've got a party to plan on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Have fun. But thank you for yeah. all you've done for my kid and well, all the kids no. here. Tim oh. Levitt, Tim Levitt Tim's is playing at Fireflies. Um, he's one of, you oh, know, that's fun part of for the, the adult crowd. Well, yeah. actually, it's in the patio. Oh. So it's the, it's the outback. It's where we've the been outback. Before. So that's right. real family friendly and it's a great place to take your kids. And his music's always fun. Absolutely. Um, you know, a lot of grad parties this weekend. The, so you get um, it up for the grad parties a lot? Excuse me. Yeah. Uh, from time to time, I try to. You know, I, that's a personal family thing. I, I'll, yeah, usually, right. I'll say thank you so much for the invitation. I hope you have a wonderful celebration. And yeah, you know, that's right. a lot of yeah. parties to go to. Right. Right. I still need to mow my lawn right. and you know uh, get my kids off to their events and things. Yeah. So. But it's a yeah. fun time of year. Tonight is yeah. so special. It's the energy in the room is really unique. Of, of all the events all year long, tonight stands out. So as what will be the your role special. as the, as one of the assistant? Um, sure. So I'll. I'll Keeping me out from holding seats right now. <laughs> <laughs> part, yeah, part of it's Darlene crowd control. is already like taking rope now. I'm kidding. Crowd she control, uh, no. But uh, one of our b bigger responsibilities is reading the names, the first, middle, and last name of the yeah. students that we've worked with. So I work with students A through K. And Justin works with students with last names L through Z. Okay. And so, so you we, get my kid. We did a dry <laughs> You run. have to be certain. You say that name properly. Yeah, That's we, hard. We practice yeah. really. Uh, we practice quite a oh bit on God. writing them out phonetically and making sure we don't want to dishonor anyone. Right. It's such a special They're moment. So. I mean, last night. Um, <laughs> Some of the names are hard to say. I mean, Mrs. Greco did amazing. Yeah. Some of the names were oh, are hard. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a it's a weird role because it's not like you're giving a speech. You're just reading a name, and you know there's either you did it right or you did it wrong. <laughs> right. There's no real jokes to tell no. to break the are air. You, you just the names yeah. tonight. Yes, and I'll, I know. And I know this will be Jean Birchman's last time handing out diplomas. Wow. And her youngest is also graduating oh, tonight, nice. Molly. So this special is, moment yeah, for special Jean. Yeah, special moment for Jean and all um, around. Stuff and I'm, I yeah. think that's about yeah. it. We thank you. All right, thank you all very much. Cheers. Great day morning. Day. Absolutely. Thank Cheers. Have a wonderful Cheers. graduation. I'm here to announce the upcoming spring 1944 visit of Bob Hope and his band of merrymakers for their USO tribute show, Sing, Sing, Sing. When? June 8th, 9th, and 10th this very year. Where? Hopkinton Center for the Arts. So reach out for a show pass, come to the HCA and lift your spirits high, and be reminded of what we're all fighting for. This is Private Al, signing off. This week on All About Hopkinton, Mary Arnott sits down with Fire Fire Paramedics Tim Healy and Tom Poria as they talk about Hopkinton Fire long Prevention. Driveways. Uh, I don't know how they do that. that. Maybe that's just by street and then yeah. the numbers are in on the... Typically you have to have it at the entrance to your driveway. You know, sometimes people may have their mailbox on the other side of the road, which can make it more challenging, which means they should put a number on their side of the road so we can find them easily.